yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. Like, but it's so tempting. I think I can pull it off, but it won't be without stress and and pain and hell. So uh, about four days ago, I booked some flights to Costa Rica, which was completely rash, irrational. The reason why is because I saw a Warham catamaran, a Tiki 46, for sale on Facebook, and I've been chatting to the guy. I mentioned it in last week's video that uh, it was time sensitive, so he was going to give the boat away because he's just done with it, and he was just going to give it away for very cheap. So we'll get into prices and money a little bit later on in the video or in the next video, depending on how long this takes, but. Yeah, it's in Costa Rica, which is a very moist, wet country, so that worries me a little bit. Needs a lot of work, but that's reflected in the price. If I can pull this off, it's going to be a monumental, epic, amazing thing. So there's only one way to go about it, and that's to see the boat physically. And I have to do it. <laughs> and it's uh, a week before Christmas, and I'm jetting off. I just need to see it. I mostly just need to see if the hulls are okay. Check that, you know, it's not rotten in the hulls because apparently the hulls are good. It's the cross beams. That project for him has just broken him. So I've got a flight now to uh, London Heathrow and then a flight from Gatwick to San Jose in Costa Rica. And the link between those two flights is very short. So uh, hopefully I'll make it. There's a rail strike and all sorts of funky things happening in this country. So because if I miss this flight, I'm absolutely knackered non-refundable flights and also i've invested so much money into this trip so i really hope it pays off and i hope that we get a gem of a boat looking forward to bringing you guys along with me thanks for watching the last videos it's helped me a lot with all the advertising revenue and all that so thank you very much okay let's hope i can catch this flight can't believe it I've actually made it through all the traffic and the strikes. Unbelievable. Off to Costa Rica. I feel like I've lost my mind. We'll find out if I have. arrived in the hostel part of the reason I wanted to come out here was to just see kind of what the area is like what the country's like and uh, I don't know it doesn't feel too safe not like uh, Thailand or Southeast Asia I think it's a different ball game so it's gonna be interesting to see what the rest of the country's like the traffic's mental yeah I'm in this kind of dingy little hostel and I wish I'd have left to like all my valuables at home like my I've got my good camera, I've got my computer and stuff, but I think I'm probably just being a bit over the top. Yeah, but it's good to see the country before like committing to anything. And uh, yeah, tomorrow I make my way to the south of the country, which is a small country, it's Costa Rica, but the roads are pretty mental and there's a lot of mountain ranges and stuff. So Plus I look like such, such a gringo. <laughs> got my rental car costing me uh, about $700 so like I said I've invested a lot of money into it. But yeah reading the safety advice on the UK government website it says car theft and theft from cars are common. I should not really be reading this stuff. Anyway I'm gonna drive now hopefully to meet the owner of the boat and then I think I'll stay there tonight and then we'll drive down to the boat tomorrow. So wish me luck driving a manual which I'm more comfortable with but we are driving on the other side of the road so I have to use my right hand for that. It's uh, really interesting to drive through this country. So there's like vultures chilling on the side of the road eating roadkill. But I feel so lonely. I don't know what, well, I know what it is. It's because I'm on my own. <laughs> These adventures, they're much nicer shared with people. Happiness is nothing unless you can share it with people. So there you go. Driving through Costa Rica thoughts. Yeah, that's the uh, working space area mm. I told you about. And have a look at those. 
And I'll tell you later on Mariposa where they go to. Ah, okay. Those are for the third deck. Ah, okay. Um, I drilled holes in once and we tried it. It fits on all the four slots. So mm. the same holes need to go on the other ones. That's where the metal pin goes. Solar okay. panels, kitchen. What's the kitchen like in the middle, in the center it's of the boat? third deck. There are four deck compartments. Yeah. And that's the third deck. Part. Okay. You'll see the mariposa. Yeah. That's on those beams, this box is going to sit. Yeah. Um, it's fiberglass already. Yeah, it needs to be painted. I still have primer left. Okay. It's really expensive epoxy primer. Mm. But, yeah. There she is. So this is the guy who's been looking after the boat. He's oh. living here? Yeah. So this is his pier? <laughs> okay, nice. And there were, that's where she sits right now, but he said if you work on her, you can pull her to the side. Okay. Just living here handy, helpful, yeah, happy yeah. to get some money for his pier. And has boats and pools and stuff, and it's just handy to know. Yeah, yeah. And oh, good, good point here. the bay here, it's naturally, it's beautiful. Do you ever get any swell coming through? or is, uh... No, here is super calm. Yeah. You have the tides, which change a lot. Yeah. Like three meters in altitude. Yeah, yeah. But it's super calm. It's the end of the bay. Yeah. She just sits there quiet. <laughs> Let me take a look at this. Ah, okay, so we take the white one. Yeah, now okay. it's on a dry. But oh, that big one. Yeah, it's been here and it's super nice to go under her. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff. There we go. So I can add navigation. Okay, so we're on board. Let's take a look around. Got the old, uh, the old walking test. <laughs> yeah, that's how far we got before I kind of collapsed. Yeah. Um, it's not. We got some nets from tuna fishers. Here's where the hammock goes. Yeah, yeah. The wood is already treated, repainted it. It's for finishing the deck. Okay. And we were super unlucky with the plywood for those here. Okay. Well, a different type of plywood, and you can see there. We made them all new, but they're just falling apart again. Uh, uh. That was not good. Yeah. Most of them need to be redone. It was quite easy. Just plywood sheet and cut it out and yeah, yeah so what are these are these like lockers or that's where the anchor winch goes okay is there an anchor inlet with it yeah nice the big one in here is the anchor yeah. box there's the desk and the four parts i just showed you they go in here okay it's just putting them in put the pins in yeah and then there sits the box Here's going to be the steering wheel, the okay. kitchen, and then we have six poles for the roof. Okay. I can send you the designs. I mean, now there's still a chance to customize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little exactly. bit. Most of the, actually, most of it is already built. Like all the materials, everything is already here. But yeah. still, like the kitchen, it's small things. You can still decide. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, those are the parts where the fiberglass went off. Okay, yeah. So like, the the biggest problem you've had is the beams, the, these crushed yeah. beams. The beams uh, are new. All yeah, the like the wood is new, isn't it? Yeah. It's just the fiberglass went off, and I just sealed it with epoxy. Yeah. for now but it's once in Mexico. I mean there's desert style. Yeah. So it's not as humid as here. But still have a look at them but they're stable. Like I wouldn't did I show you the pictures from the old beams? Uh yeah yeah it was just rotten through. And I thought about sailing to Mexico with them. Yeah. yeah. Or engining on a yeah, with engine yeah. on a low day. But those I wouldn't mind. I think nothing would happen. Yeah. You yeah. can see the ropes they're ship. Okay. Those yeah. are new. Yeah. Um, so the little lashings. There are also pins through the beams, so it's not the only pin holding everything together. Okay. But those I wouldn't trust too much. They're new. So those are the elements for here and here in the last. Yeah. One go to and the engine boxes. One is behind you. So this is the, the engine box. Yeah. So that's what one engine box, yeah. and that, that that goes there. Right. You can see the holes. Yeah. It's basically, just I can see them. Like it's not a lot of work. Ah, okay. But okay. you need to put this one in there. Four or five guys better. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just f***ing heavy, and you just. And then you just lift it in, put the pin in, and then yeah. it's in. Like it's not a requires like five guys. Yeah. But then to put this box in is 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's not. Yeah. And in the boxes, it's all in the plants. Okay. That's where you pull. Here goes a gondola. Okay. They look a bit dirty, but we. If you leave anything like in the rain, it goes green. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but they looked horrible before. Like it was so much work sanding them and put, yeah. replace some wood pieces, and they're all painted with primer. And yeah. in here, in this part, they go those gondolas, uh, and that's where the engines go. You've got the plans, haven't you? So yeah, yeah it's, it's most just it's like sticking it together with pins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they two go here. And in the middle there goes the sword. Uh. And the back area wasn't really designed. We have the wood for just deck. And I just would have to put a big bed. Yeah. And that's where, where I would have slept. Yeah, yeah, outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah, so for to finish her, put those four beams in here, fit the box in, install the steering wheel, put the two engine boxes in the back with the gondolas. Mm. Put the engines in. They are in cacao. It's okay. Um, okay. Nice. Ah, okay. So they're stored in the place that you were staying. Yeah. Staying at. When we left, it was the safest place to just put it in the store. Yeah, 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 yeah. And nice. that's where they go. There the sailors coming out. It's ah, okay. Yeah. So. A, a lot of people will be shocked by this rig, like the two junk rig, one mast in each hull, and uh, yeah, it's so interesting, like how this is gonna sail on a beam reach. It confuses me a lot, but I have a I can show you later a picture. Yeah, they just just go up like two big wings. Yeah, yeah, and it was amazing. <laughs> and in the front front and back back some people use it for some stuff here they just made air compartments what are like uh, safety safety so if it smashes into something they're just four big air compartments okay which help her to float more i mean it's a wooden boat i don't know what yeah should yeah. sink but <laughs> Okay. Oh, 
my brain. Yeah, there's one birth, two births. That's the biggest Yeah, thing. yeah. Here we have batteries inside. We have a lot of storage. It just looks super nice. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so like you sent me some videos and stuff, so I yeah. kind of had an idea. And I was I was thinking like what what's this like discoloration? I was worried that it would be like damp, but I don't think it is. I think it's just where the like, the epoxy is just worn off over time, right? Here it's probably not been done for a long time. It didn't have epoxy on it. But I think that's another uh, okay, like varnish. Yeah. You can see the other side. The other side looked similar and we just sanded it and painted over it. Yeah. And yeah. the other hole, this hole we didn't touch. So like Hanukkah gave me a lot of advice. And it was like just check, check the fillets. Um, you can see like the craftsmanship, and look for like um, spores or like mold, um, mildew, and stuff. But it doesn't feel like there is at all in these holes. It's just like I don't know what's going on with the camera. Here. They put some. Isolation foam here. Oh, okay. Had some holes in it, probably just because of when you hit it or something. Uh, um, is this ah? Uh, so this is foam. Yeah. It feels like uh, yeah, that was isolation. Yeah. And yeah, I filled the holes with something they recommended me here, which apparently is shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Want to share her tips? I'm also happy to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Water tank. Okay. But it's it's nice. just a hundred liters, but yeah, put the water mic on. Nice escape hatches. Stressful work. I would just recommend you not to do big repairs in the part where it's raining a lot. Where it's what? Raining a lot. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Get a dry space. Yeah, yeah. Mexico, desert. Mexico or a big tent, but even still, you've got the humidity. Yeah. Dry space and you'll be so much more happy. Yeah, yeah. It's just. Because then it doesn't matter. There are open wood parts, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's the rain is what fucks it up. Mm. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is they had an office space in here. Mm. I think I would have made a sitting space yeah, so if yeah. it's raining you have a nice inside area where you can just sit and chill and and with the option to sleep so yeah like all this is like it's got insulation foam isn't it yeah it's uh, like there you can see it. There's lots of oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, when I got here, also now the house seems super dry. Yeah. Like the yeah, yeah. What I would worry most about are the beams. Yeah. And. There's one soft spot on the other side. Mm -hmm. I asked Hannes, he said it was like this six years ago when they got here. Uh. Hola, que pasa? <laughs> I actually stopped the camera recording. In fact, the camera overheated. And I was finding it difficult to like to focus on the boat and like trying to understand everything while filming as well. So 
I put the camera down and I just tried to get a good sense of the boat, but we didn't stay at the boat much longer actually. Maurice had to get off, uh, but I'm still here, so the boat is only just down the road. And essentially what's gonna happen is I'm gonna sit here, stare at the wall, write down little things in my notepad and like really consider this boat. And then tomorrow I'm gonna go look at the boat, feel it, just stay there for a good few hours and just feel it out and then just make a decision. Because like I said, it's time sensitive. Maurice, he's got loads of people asking him for, for the boat and I know a lot of people will you know, be suspicious of that, but his reasons for selling the boat, like he did mention briefly, like he had a breakdown. Obviously a, a lot of people will see that as a, a warning sign and I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning that. We, after chatting last night and I stayed at his place and we're actually really similar in many ways. And um, you know, he, he's not, he doesn't want to give the boat to to just anyone he's been very very upfront about that and he's not been selling the boat to me at all in fact he's been underselling it so that has also sold it to me quite a lot so yeah like running through like the good and bad bits like i'm gonna see tomorrow but this is a, a warren tiki 46 and although it's this is not about the money for me like this boat is you know you, these boats in like a really good condition are like well there's one online now for 150,000 US dollars and this one is priced like just above my budget so my budget was 20,000 pounds but I did kind of calculate like a few extra thousand to you know for upgrades and like a bit of a safety net if that makes sense I'm in a position where I at, at the offer which we've talked about I can buy this boat and it's my dream boat I said you know a few videos ago this is my dream boat it's this and a Tiki 38 have been my dream boat for like the last year and so it's just so so tempting a lot of the work has been done and there are parts where, which which he's done and the epoxy is not set properly and that's just the, the you know a problem with the climate here in Costa Rica and I think like the biggest negative of this whole thing is the fact that it's here in Costa Rica. Not not just that it's in Costa Rica, but it's in quite a difficult to access place. So it's taking me like two days to get down here, obviously. On top of that, there's the flight and stuff, and it's not cheap to get out here from the UK. So I have to consider that. And another big thing is obviously like with everything that's gone on and stuff, like I'm really enjoying spending time with my folks, with my friends. And so my plan would be if I was to buy her, I would leave her where she is now for like a month and a half, two months while I go back. I need to study Spanish. I need to, I've got the plans now for this boat. So I need to study the plans. I'd like to build a model as well and um, still just learn, learn, learn as much as I can while spending time with my friends and family. So that would be the plan. I would hopefully come back here with my dad, with my mum and dad, and we can like try and get these engines sorted and stuff. And that's the thing, like the boat is like 90% complete, so I don't think there's, <laughs> I don't think there's too much money more that needs to go into it. And I say that like obviously with a bit of a laugh because that's never the case with boats. And like I said, like this would be all of my money being spent on this boat. And, and so then I'd be relying on the YouTube channel to generate income. So the last like month has been good because I had like a couple of videos which went up to like 100,000 views. And I'd, I'd like to go into like the finances of how much money I make because of that. And I will go into that in a future video. But uh, in a nutshell, it's basically, you know, it's not enough to make lots of money and then throw the money at the project at, at this stage so there's a huge risk involved there but you know uh, it's that's like a, a huge risk but there's a lot of stuff there so there's the engines which I want to go and take a look at they're being stored across the bay I'd love to take a look at those while I'm here um, and you know my plan would be to get you know the rest of the deck pieces in uh, get the engines in and just sail it in the bay and just sail it in some high wind or whatever But yeah, like I do want to go back to the UK for a month and a half. I want to see you know 
and it's like do I feel comfortable leaving the boat there so Chepe seems like a really nice and honest guy he charges 200 US dollars per month to store the boat there and it's just like if there's like a really big storm is that gonna be a problem and I'm not as worried about that than I am like my own sanity leaving the boat there so and there's no real other places to get the boat now there's no engines there's no nothing we could potentially tow it but I'm only here for another two two days three days and you know tomorrow I need to see the boat more and, and make my judgment there yeah and part of me just wants to like to just dive into this this is just gonna be epic it's just gonna be an epic adventure but there are things holding me back at the moment like just the fact that it's all the way here getting stuff delivered here is not going to be cheap getting stuff is just not going to be cheap at all and also like it absolutely breaks my heart as well but like just thinking about Yoshi what would I do with Yoshi bringing him here would be I don't think you'd be comfortable here there's a lot of stray dogs and he'd just be fighting all the time so I would have to find like a really nice place for him uh, so if anyone well we'll see we'll see we don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, I love that dog to bits and like we're literally like inseparable. So that's like really hard for me to think about. Um, leaving my family and friends behind. I can always come out here for three months and I can always go back home and not worry too much, you know, spend a month or a few weeks at home and then come back out. But then again, that's money. <laughs> so basically, yeah, uh, I'm gonna go check out the boat again tomorrow. I'm just down the road now in a hotel. I'm probably going to spend the rest of the night staring at the wall and just thinking, googling and just like wondering whether this boat is uh, is is going to be my next chapter. And it's like if I take on this project, like this is going to be my life for I reckon like 3 months of a refit and then sailing it to a boatyard where I can dismantle it or at least store it and then do like a full refit I'd also like to build a deck pod or some accommodation in the center of the boat I don't think that the space is really used wisely there's well we'll see it properly tomorrow but this whole trip has been like a whirlwind and my filming has not been that good so bear with me and uh, I've got a blistering headache <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's difficult, it's difficult, like, but it's so tempting. I think I can pull it off, but it won't be without stress and, and pain and hell. Um, but it's always like that with both, like the rewards are, are actually so rewarding, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So... Yeah, bear with me, bear with me.